Hello, my name is Carlos Perlman. I am the founder and president of the Fairmont Heights Football Alumni Association. One of our missions is to preserve the history and honor those who made Fairmont Heights football program and Fairmont Heights High School great. We are about to show you a video that was filmed on February 26, 2022. During this video, Hall of Fame coach Jeff Piplow gave you his take on the integration process that occurred in 1972. The fall of 1972 is when Fairmont Heights High School integrated. And many of the players that you see in attendance in this video were with him and Coach Payton at that time when the school went through this phase. These players also graduated in 1975 and played a major impact along with Coach Piplow and Coach Payton in making our school great and what it is today. I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you for tuning in. And we opened all these new books that came in case they were all old books from Friendly. Friendly got all the new books. And that's how it worked for everything. Money, changing things, going to Congress. And they still do the gerrymandering on what's going on now. That's what they did there. They moved the houses. They used all kinds of words to say, well, actually, they had a big thing called, uh, I was reading a little bit about it, and they got Fairmont Heights, they got John Williams was very vocal in it. Remember the- uh, Yeah, Mr. Frank, yeah, he was big on that. He kept fighting for that there, but they had um, what they call um, sort of a transition thing where you could write transition and get it there so you could go to a different school, yeah. and that made it better, except they didn't give the blacks any of the forms. So the whites could move wherever they wanted, but the blacks couldn't. Only, and back then, before that, when you guys came to school, black teachers had to teach blacks, white students have to, or teachers had to teach white. And then they came to 1972, that's when my 73, that's when the court ordered, we're not, you're not going fast enough. And then the people from Prince George's County, you gotta remember, Maryland was the border state in the Civil War, mm -hmm. but Prince George's County was a Southern. They were Southern. They weren't, they, the, the cotton was all there, stuff like that. So that part of there really wasn't, they were more Southern than they were there. So you know how that is and maybe something today. But anyway, so they came in there and then in 72, 73, that's when they desegregated and they put the stuff in there. But we still didn't get the, what we were supposed to get as far as money, books, everything like that. They didn't do it. But the whites got transferred in. Probably many of you came in and how many came in in 70? 273 did you get transferred over then from there and you would have gone there and then they they did another transfer thing which a good and was fair when um, they took um, this was a little bit later they took the black students out of Fairmont Heights that had to go to I don't know if any of you did go to Northwestern yep. yeah. well yeah. in Northwestern when they went there they got the whole track team except one guy hmm. that year Northwestern won the indoor and outdoor state track championship. Uh, they got like seven or eight football players, different kinds of things like that. But in return, I don't want you to think that the whites aren't fair, they gave us one white JV player for basketball. And he lasted, I think, two games. We put him in to start the second game. They said, why are you putting him in? <laughs> Basically because he's white. <laughs> He says he can't shoot or play. Yeah, I know that, but I think his mother's cute. <laughs> so we put him in, and that was it. He played that game and a half, and he was gone. So we lost everything, but what was equal and stuff never came back. So you guys went through, and even today, as you know, things aren't always the way they should be in different states and things. But you guys were the first sort of heroes that had to fight all that, and you probably didn't know, and I didn't know what the background was. They weren't, they weren't trying to help anybody, especially those that are a little dark, darker skinned than me. That, was, that wasn't the purpose at all. They only did stuff, and today, if they had to. I mean, they, the, court, the guy would come to the jury up there in the courtroom, Kaufman was the judge, and he'd say, well, we're trying to move this on and get in the thing so it's, we get uh, inclusive with the blacks and the whites and everybody, it works out pretty good. And the judge would say, well, it's 1973. He says, yeah, we're working pretty fast. Well, this, this edit here from the 
court says you have to do it in 1954. What have you been doing for the last <laughs> years? Oh my God. Yeah, that's basically what it was. They just sort of right. played games and stuff with there. And I, I would bet to see, because I saw Bethune, and I saw some other just little stuff. Your names are probably in some stuff that you don't even know about where they right. said that's moving. But whatever you did, you know, you worked harder than the other people that had worked. And I go on to a little bit of football, because mm -hmm. I know we're all players here when we started. Uh, we had 11. We didn't have the equipment. We didn't have anything, whatever. We had to get, as I told some of them, we got the, from Rawlings, they got the new stuff, the stuff that they were refinishing, and then the trash that they were throwing in the garbage. That's what we got. That yeah. was it. We didn't have enough. We, didn't, we only had somebody else. I shouldn't tell you this because you guys got hoof and mouth disease now, but we didn't have enough <laughs> mouthpieces. We used to have to buy them. Peyton and I, we didn't get much money and stuff like that, but you know, we'd say, he'd say, Parker, I don't have a mouthpiece. Like, give, me, give me a new mouthpiece, Peyton. He'd go in his pocket or off the ground. And I'd go like this. Here, Parker. <laughs> Somebody else would need one. And I'd say, Brooks needs a mouthpiece. I said, hey, his teeth aren't that good. <laughs> I'm sure he needs a mouthpiece. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, that's what we, we did, and, and we didn't have, as we said, the helmets and stuff. Probably some of you didn't have uh, hip pads and that kind of stuff, and, and as I said, the referees were... both ways, too. Yeah, they, they, yeah. and they didn't give us uh, anything, and it wasn't until a few years later. And we also, have you have to remember, when you guys played, I'd take you 20 guys against anybody in the state. We didn't play that way. That's not how the game was played. We had our 20 or 18 with 11 pieces of equipment, and we played <laughs> Friendly, who had 60. It was number one team in the, yeah, in the area yeah. at that time. Oxen Hill had like 3,000 people. Yeah. We had, you know, uh, Potomac had that. All of, So we played 4A schools, and we're a little bit, Howard County's playing that now. When they have 30 people, they don't play a game. They don't have enough. They had like 11 and stuff like this. And, so, and we went in there and played those games. And as I told some people, at Friendly, we had to change in the hallway. That was nice, whatever. And different kinds of rules in the referees. As I mentioned before, we hated the black referees. I didn't know that until Peyton and Sharp told me, no, you want the black referees. I said, yeah, we want the black guys. Where's the where black team here? But no, but man, they only rooting for the white guys so they can get a job higher up in their thing. So if they call the penalty on us, the white guys all pat them on the back. That's the way it is. Oh, my God. They call the best, the best run. They called that back. Uh, and all this kind of thing, which you should have been faster than that. <laughs> but, you know, with the equipment and everything else, that's just the way it is. So when you went in there and somebody says, well, how'd you do, five and five, three and seven, whatever, that wasn't a fair thing at all. You give me you guys, well, not some of them now. <laughs> so, going to have to be a lot of linemen. <laughs> Oh you're, my God! The way you're running down. <laughs> 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 and, hey, coach, you remember when we used to? Y'all used to put us in the pit because y'all thought we wasn't mean enough. Oh yeah, yeah. The, pit, the pit was a good place to go. Up the hill was a good place to go. I was also telling uh, things changed a little bit. You guys were good guys. Yeah, did you? Get into a little trouble, smoke a little dope, try to screw all the girls. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do. Uh, but, uh, yeah, but nowadays, um, some of the kids that we had and stuff, and uh, Studdivant was one. I'll give you an example. I shouldn't with the two Studdivant brothers trying to hide from me now. But we had some trouble. I was kind of out of an assistant a little bit. I was working over at uh, Tasker. Where the, I, I put the guy in the car to get shot from the sniper. And you know, I've done a lot of crazy things. And so it turns out, though, that this guy across the street, or no, across the field right there, I don't remember his name, Marshall. I can't remember my phone number. But anyway, he was the big drug guy in the area. And so his son had gotten a fight with a couple of football players, and they beat the shit out of the son. Well, that wasn't going to happen. So he came over with his buddies from the drug, and for a week and a half, I guess, uh, so that they, you, you know, they were all at the fence waiting for us and whatever. And so, and they kept coming out. So on the game day, and the cops were there on the game day, they came in and the cops were around and he came across the field 
uh, this Marshall guy, uh, whatever, the father, who we know is a big drug dealer, and he reached in his, like this, to, we thought he was getting a gun. Well, turned out he was getting cigarettes. However, some of my player coaches on the team who also had guns, they're reaching in their pocket. Oh my God. And Skip, I don't know, some of you know yeah, Skip, was, whatever. Yeah, Skip, now that he wore big fat sweatpants that he bought at like uh, Home Depot. And he wore those shoes or those uh, things like that. And he had his gun in his pants. And, but, his pants were like that. And, uh, and, and so, his gun went down to the bottom of his shoe. And so, and we're out there in the field with the referees, the players, the crowd, and here we got a lot of guns on the field. So, so Skip's trying to get his out. He said, here, Pipe, I'll take my gun. I said, I'm going to take your gun out here. Are you crazy? Uh, so, I guess we got away. Nobody was shot or killed. Man. That one's so things did change over the years and stuff. At least I don't remember the gun stories from you guys. But uh, I, uh, again, you know, it's uh, and for Peyton, I speak a little bit too. It's an honor to be here. You guys have all been good. You've had each other's backs. Have you had some ups and downs in your life? Sure. But probably being at Fairmont Heights, playing with a team, doing stuff like that makes you a better person. Nah, we're not all great. That's right. Actually, none of you fuckers. Except that guy with a camera. <laughs> that, that's how it kind of went. I have four or five teachers that I'm still uh, friends with now. Paul Pinsky, I'm visiting. Willie Wax, oh, yeah. Willie some Wax. of you know him. And Paul's wife, uh, she died. Uh, uh, Joan Rothkamp, she was the girls coach. And there's been about seven or eight there. And uh, we, we try to, this one group tries to stay in touch and hopefully I hope you guys and maybe with what Gist has done here uh, put your name down there and stuff and you know you get together uh, I'll stick my name there and you, if you want to cross it out I understand and, uh, but you know we get together and do things because uh, you know you've done a lot for integration which you probably don't know but it was just kind of it just happened there, there weren't, I don't recall a lot of big fights over black and white while I was at no, Fairmont, nope. and, unless maybe <coughs> Joe, unless maybe yeah, Joe Baden got the girls that were like fair. Oh yeah, well we were fighting the other team. <laughs> 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 we didn't care if they were black or white, we wanted to fight. Oh my that, God. That a different story. <laughs> and I don't forget, I got a, a short memory, but I know in that state playoff game, those motherfuckers cheated because they went on two and you went on one every time. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, again, uh, there's some pictures up here you guys can check out a little bit of stuff. Oh, and my last thing, and I'll show you a couple things where Peyton and I have been friends for, as I say, 50 years. And we did a lot of stuff. We went to Hawaii together. And back then, black and white wasn't even there. Oh, to give an example, we both went over during desegregation as two white teachers. I said, I go over there, says, yeah, we need two white teachers. Peyton, you and Piper go over there, you the white teachers. I look at Peyton, I said, are you the white guy or am I the white guy? So, so anyway, but that's how you had to, but we went, we did a lot of things together. We went white water rafting with my yeah, wife. That. Yeah. My, and that Peyton, I my best friend. Raft raft. <laughs> yeah, I know. We did a lot of things he would never do. He says, white water rafting. He says, why isn't it black water rafting? I said, I don't know. And we didn't know the first thing about that. But we went down to Yakagani. I don't know what it is there. And me, thinking I know something which I knew nothing. I brought my jacket to lunch, all the kind of stuff, put that into the into the raft. Well, that ain't how rafts work. You sit on the side. The bottom of the raft has four inches of water. So we have water sandwiches and everything else there. And so we get going and we're going down. And I said, okay, Ralph, man. We go down there and oh, we ain't going like 15 feet. You're like in the bathtub where it's going like this. Linda, that falls out of the raft. <laughs> So I reach in there and I grab Linda. I said, what the fuck? And I pull her out by her hair and stuff, and throw her back in the boat. And Peyton, huh? That's what he uses, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and so we go about another 50 feet, and I say, Linda, 
Why well, the bitch is falling out of the raft again? Pays that she's out. What? And I'm like, so I reach down. I, I guess time I get her by her shoe, I pull her back into the thing, and we go get her. And I said, look, and I said, you can't be doing this. We're we only going ten minutes. We're, it's a four-hour trip. Well, we go about another fifty feet. Rough so water's a little rough. That she falls out of the raft again. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm going down like this. Peyton, he's a big help. He says, I think she's dead. She's drowned. I said, no, she can't be drowned, man. You can't go home with a drowned woman. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah she's oh drowned. So I, he holds my feet. I got to go into the round. And we pull him back. We pull him up. I said, look, we got to tie you down or something because this, this is not the thing to, to do. So that was one of our great trips was the whitewater raft. And, and while I'm off the subject for a minute where we go back and forth, if any of you guys, and I'm giving you homework, I know you didn't, none of, who did any homework while they were at Fairmont? Uh, 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 you, you put us in the library. We had to go in the library. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Books. Anyway, you got a job. krillman has been working on this, but anything you can do, we still, and Peyton has always wanted, uh, I've got this sign made up for him, but he's always wanted on the scoreboard on the new place, Fairmont Heights football field, uh, uh, in honor of Coach Peyton, whatever. I've called everybody from the state senators to the Board of Education, whatever, and I, and I know Perlman and alumni, and they're not doing anything about it. So maybe different calls, or if you know anybody, or when's that scoreboard gonna be up? Because Peyton has always wanted his name up on that scoreboard. That doesn't mean the little kids aren't going to throw rocks yeah, at it like they do. <laughs> we did a lot of things. Peyton and I, we went to Hawaii together. That's hard to believe. We, uh, we didn't know what we were doing there. And this picture here is of Peyton. Now you yep. thought he was an ugly mother when you knew him. <laughs> <laughs> He lived in Pennsylvania. I mean, he lived up in uh, he, he lived up in uh, New York. Uh, what's the name? Uh, the place where they had the Olympics. Uh, can't remember what it was. Lake Placid. Lake Placid. That's where he was up there. Oh, that was another one of our good experiences. Peyton and I were always trying to make a little money, not necessarily for ourselves to get things going. I'll tell you some of that. Well, he says, "Pipe will look." He says, "I got a place up in Lake Placid." He says. We put in $500 a piece. We're going to fill that up. They got the Olympics there. We're going to make a fortune. Somehow he got $500 from me. I, I don't know what I did. He put $500 in. We got some guy that was up there and did it. Well, the first week at Lake Placid, there was no snow. So we got a place with no snow. The second week, over the weekend, it snows. I said, God, we're safe. Well, unfortunately, it snowed eight feet. And you couldn't get into the place. So that was how we, we made money. And I'm going to tell you two other things that maybe Great. I hate to be redundant, and you guys here again, but our two money-making schemes. One of them was the toothbrushes. Did you hear about the toothbrushes? Oh, God. I told Peyton this was the dumbest mother thing you ever seen. Peyton says, look, this guy comes in, and this was more for the basketball team right there. And he says, look. Some sleazy white guy says, look, you got, I got toothbrushes for you in boxes. And he says, and I got basketballs, I got footballs, I got new shirts. You're going to get all this stuff if you buy that. I told Peyton, don't let these guys see this. It's a bad plan. I know this. I'm a white guy. I know this. They're not going to do this. Thing. So he goes in, and the guys all sit down, and he shows that the toothbrushes are Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. There's seven of them different colors. He says, they'll really want this. I said, Peyton, I said, I have the guys on the basketball team don't even brush your teeth. I said, why do you want that? He says, this is going to be big. And everybody says, so when a guy gives the speech and all these kind of things you can buy, everybody jumps up, yeah, we want these. Yeah. Well, a week later, we come into the office and we sit down in the office and we always know we're in trouble. Kaya says, Peyton and Pipelo, report to the office immediately. We know we've up there. I said, what do we do then? Whatever. Well, you can't get in the office because there's like a hundred boxes it's this big, of toothbrushes to the ceiling all over there. Well, the secretaries can't get in and all hell is breaking loose. We didn't, you know, we only ordered two. I bought one of them. I don't know why. And some other, the guidance counselor bought one. And that was what we had as the uh, 
great thing with the two guys. We had to send them back. It cost us $225 to send them back, and we send them back. So that's what we did. And our last thing where we made money on, you guys made, any of you guys go to the roller derby? Oh, yeah. What a disaster that was. They stole the clothes. That was the Oh, they stole the clothes. They stole the They said they thought that I'm talking to the three limits down there. They're, they're, they're shags. I wouldn't even know. Uh, so they were, and they said, well, we brought in $8,000 worth of jewelry. $8,000 worth of jewelry, all their houses together didn't cost $8,000. They ain't getting that. Well, there were fights up, you're talking about fights, up in the gym and in the parking lot, and the dogs are out there. I ran across the, uh, the uh, uh, whole field chasing some guys down, and the only other person with me was the dog. And I said, I'm not sure if this guy's on my side or not. <laughs> I don't want anybody else said. And so they would, they broke all the windows. And this is when I learned about it doesn't matter if you're black, white, um, Asian or anything else. If you're irritable and mad, the world is going to stop for you. Because we had everybody in this thing and this little teeny, little teeny white lady, curly hair, glasses, we a little cross. And she's standing there like this, and the lady behind her says, We can't see. Peyton and I are standing there. And she turns around and says, You motherfuckers, any of you cocks, ain't nobody watching any of this sh If I gotta get on the goddamn floor myself, anybody wanna come out here and fight? Ain't nobody moved. She's only this big. <laughs> <laughs> so they tore. And that's what killed, for those that wanna know what happened to Mr. and Mrs. Jeffries, Peyton and I killed them. It wasn't on purpose, but they had that. I don't know if you ever went, no, you guys didn't go to the library, but they had this <laughs> library thing which was red, and she had these metal things, it was like the queen would go down or something, and she, we wanted to use them to hold the crowd back. <laughs> yeah, well, she said, be very careful of those, very careful. Oh, yeah, we'll take care of you. Well, when we opened the door at 7 o'clock after they threw on the bricks to the windows, the crowd went for miles, and it was a mob. It was the same one that attacked the Capitol down here. Yeah. Oh, they man. tore those things apart and threw them down into the tennis court. And she goes out there, and she's crying the next day. And I said, we'll take care of it. Yeah, a week later, I think they both died. So, that, that so that's basically what Peyton and I did. A lot of stupid things, whatever. We also had our, my last story is, probably one of you did this, probably Brooks, when we were coaching basketball. <laughs> You know, you had the three floors, and you had to go down there, and this was our first game. We went down into the bottom. We gave our little lecture, do this kind of stuff. You guys went up. Peyton and I gave the high five. We're ready. I think we're set. We go, well, that door you can lock from the other side, but not from the inside. So the manager, he locked it from the other side. We couldn't get out at the door. There's nothing there. There's no cell phone stuff like this. We're young. If I hadn't have seen the movie The Vikings, we'd still be there. Because we tore off a bench and kicked it off those little benches you guys sat on. And we made it like this. And we ran the door <laughs> about 25 times. We also were wearing a jacket sort of like Perlman has on it. We were, we were sweating like dogs. The sweat's coming out with splinters in our hand. Oh Finally, God. the door co collapses. We go up. Hell, there's only a minute and eight seconds left in the first quarter. I don't know. We've been coaching the game. <laughs> And so oh, then Kaya comes in, what happened down here? And Peyton said, you know, Peyton and I are trying to watch, but they broke in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't no use telling him. Well, that's anyway, that's some of the, the crazy stories behind the scenes. And I'm sure we got a, a lot more that Ralph and I did by mistake, and we apologize for him now. Yes. I want to ask some folks, when, you, when did you actually leave Farrell? Well, that wasn't exactly. Leave is kind of a <laughs> wrong word. <laughs> sort of semi. That's when the money that was missing for the girls' basketball team and stuff, and we were going to have it for the girls. He took it and changed the game around and took all that. And then we wrote a letter and said, ah, the girls were having the flowers and all that, and you canceled everything? Yeah. Well, they took that money from Magic Punchfield. And so Max, the next day, because the letter went down to the board, and the next day he comes and says, hey, Pipo, you're out of here. And then that's when I went to Tasker. Tasker, yeah, so, okay. Yeah. But it's like everything else. Wouldn't you stick up for your guys, your friends, your girls? I mean, we were making 
flowers. The mothers were coming. They were doing all this stuff, and he he could make more money where the boys came and the dance afterwards than he could with the girls. And so you coach, you coach, you coach girls team now too, huh? Yeah, I coach, we coached everything. We yeah. coached tennis. If you're on the tennis team, all you had to do was we come. I mean, there's a oh, I'll tell you Peyton's golf story. That's good. The tennis team was. I get them all sitting down there, and I say, like, okay, tennis. Does anybody have a car? Some girl raised her hand. I say, you're the captain. And, uh, that, that was it. Because nobody could play. And, and Ralph, I taught to play golf. And yeah, this was a funny story. Over at Lake Arbor, when that was still there, it's not there anymore. Uh, Peyton hadn't won a, a, a golf match in, like, seven years he was coaching. I mean, girls were coming, high heels and everything else to come out for the team. So he goes in there and he's down at Lake Arbor and the team's sitting down there like this, girls and guys, and Central comes in, walking down the thing. Well, Central has their golf clubs in black trash bags. He's carrying them, black trash bags in the golf thing. And Peyton gets all the people in you can't beat these motherfuckers in trash bags. I'm going to kick your <laughs> And you're all walking home. And that's the only match he won. That was it. Ah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God. That's how things go. And so, Coach, one more thing. When you retire, you retired. I could watch me saw a retirement video on, on, uh, on uh, YouTube. Where did you retire from? Tasker? Or? Um... Yeah, I guess I was, uh, no, I went back to, uh, oh boy, was that good too. Uh, I went back for, I got recertified, I took the test and somehow I passed it for special ed. And so you could come back in. So I came in to Fairmont Heights for a year, I think Peyton did it too. And I taught, oh boy, 10th and 11th grade special ed English. The girls and guys that were in the 10th grade taking it were the same ones that were, and they had it for an hour and a half, the same ones that were in for 11th grade. Not only did they hate each other and fight, one of the girls, she would copy all I said, look, I said, you can't copy off her. I said, you're getting a test. She says, well, I don't know the answer. If I don't copy off her, how am I going to pass the test? <laughs> and I said, I think we're missing something here. And anyway, and it turned out that the one guy who's, this is where trouble is, father worked it down at the board, Adams. Well, he got, oh boy, this was something. The girl in the tenth grade pregnant, and the girl in the eleventh grade pregnant, and they had to come in together. Well, when they came through the door, there was a fight every day between those two and him, whatever, and, and that was a complete disaster. So I did that. I said, one year of this, that, and that's plenty of that. So that was my last year. And now I sub some in the Howard County, but not too much. So that's the Pipe Bush story for a while. If you want to come up and check any kind of pictures or books, certainly uh, do that, whatever. But in and, and, and summer here, you know, you went through a lot. You don't always know what went behind the scenes, and I don't either. But you guys were kind of the first ones. You know, you talk about goes the parks and stuff and that way. But it came down the line, and you were the first one. They took Prince George's County because it was a big school for busing and whatever. But everything that the people in the hierarchy could do to screw the uh, Afro-Americans and stuff like that, they did it. And they tried to switch it around. They tried to do everything that they could. And finally, they got books. I think that's where that gerrymandering, that's still sort of comes out of that work. But it, it took time. And even today, they do a lot of, as you guys probably know, whatever. But that's it, gentlemen. Welcome back from the video. I hope you enjoyed hearing history from the, one of the men who made it himself. All the players that were in attendance, including myself, we really appreciate everything that the men, teachers, and anyone involved with the football program at Fairmont Heights and any academic programs did to make our school program and community great. Until next time, thank you for tuning in to Living History Part 2, presented by the Fairmont Heights Football Alumni Association. Thank you. Ready? Yeah. Ready. Let's get it. Everywhere we go, everywhere we go, people want to know, people want to know who we are, who we are, so we tell them, so we tell them, we are the Hornets, we 